Good day everyone. Now that you have already your research proposal that is here chapters 1 to 3, you need to have this checked and commented by your research advisor. These uh, succeeding topics that I will be sending to you will be an additional things to do, actually a part already of your thesis too, but then I want you to do already the preparation for your data collection and on your yes. thesis too, I just want you already to be writing or doing the data analysis of your uh, thesis works. So essentially, you are already done with your thesis one. And usually, when you are done with chapters one to three, checked by the advisor, you are already done with thesis one. But since we've got um, some time of together with the summer schedule and uh, first semester for the next SEM, I will make a series of videos of frequently asked questions or frequently asked by the students so that you will have everything you need and you have a swift start for your thesis to uh, next year. So I'll be sharing samples of Gantt charts and letters, and the next video will be on making your research instrument. Then I will also talk about how to apply for ethics clearance and Ayako clearance. An hour of planning can save you 10 hours of doing, and this is very effective. I plan my every day, starting with Bible time. So if you see my stories, with a verse already, that means I've already started my day. And then drinking a liter of water and so on at usually 6 a.m. But you know, I do this because being a mom, a student, an instructor, a researcher, a wife, a daughter, and a sister really requires a balance in life. You cannot do it all at one time. So you need to plan it out. And fun fact, I've been planning out things that I need to do ever since i think college and i even plan when i will do my laundry or my watch time uh, watch series for example and i don't usually stick to my plans there are a lot of times that i fall out of the grid but i try my best to do it since rewriting undone tasks makes me feel unproductive so i'm sure I am sure you also plan your life. So in our group chat, um, you can share your plans in life. So how do you plan your research? After you're done with your chapters 1, 2, and 3, what's next? So in here, you need to go back to your conceptual framework and data gathering procedure. It is all here actually, and the activities, the flow, what you just need to add is when will you do it? So that's when this tool comes uh, in, our Gantt chart. And the Gantt chart is a type of bar chart that graphically illustrates a schedule for planning, coordinating, and tracking specific tasks related to a single project. So you simply start with this format. You have here the activities that you will be doing and your timeline. The timeline can be as specific as uh, weeks or days, but not really days. Uh, usually, I put it in um, months for a Gantt chart. And then second is set your activities. So you will see your major activities in your data gathering procedure or the flow chart that you've done already. So I have here five major activities you just plot it out here in the activities section so there it is you see a while ago that i had only five that is one two three four five so i inserted finalization and approval of my proposal submission of the final copy and let's make it extra we have dissemination After that, estimate when will you do each of the major activities. For example, in um, my case, I want to do a fin 
I'm expecting the finalization and approval of my proposal this um, May. And when this is already approved, I will already seek for approval. And for the development of my module, uh, this is uh, the example I think I gave in the whole of your um, research methodology. So you will see here there's a development of module. For the development of module, I'll do it uh, from, uh, can start with June to August. And then development of research instruments, I'll do it from June to July. And that covers already your validity, uh, reliability. Of course, I will start with designing the research instrument itself. And then for data collection, that would be from August to uh, November or October. And then for data analysis, that would be on November. For submission, that would be on December. And for dissemination, I'm planning it out for the year 2022. So this is how it will look like. Next step is... Next is you write the specific task under each activity. When doing the Gantt chart, you're already looking at or imagining what are the things that you need to do for every major activity. So even the very small task you can put here so that you won't forget that there is such task that you need to accomplish in clearing the major activity. For example, in uh, securing approval that I want to do on June, on the month of June. So that is, I need to prepare letters for uh, the date of respondents and the conduct of the study. So I'll be doing two letters. One is asking for the sample frame or the respondents data. And next is a letter that will ask for permission to conduct the research. And also, I'll be applying for ethics approval from the Research Ethics Board because I'll be um, doing research uh, and I have human respondents. So I need an ethics clearance. Then for development of module, you will see here, I will map out competencies from CHEM 12 to be developed writing of the module itself, and then the assessment of experts and instructors and students of the module. So this is under three and so on. We have here even the development of the research instruments because we don't copy and paste research instruments. We design it, we validate, we pilot test and check for reliability. So all of my tools here, the achievement tool or assessment tool, achievement test, uh, attitude questionnaire, motivation questionnaire, confidence in lab skills questionnaire, even FGD interview guide questions are under the de development of research instruments. And um, that those I will start doing uh, from this month, May until July because I'll be doing uh, reliability and validity of these instruments and then have it approved so this is not just a one person task especially for research uh, this Gantt chart needs to be approved by the group so if there are five of you everyone should see this Gantt chart and everyone can uh, tell if there's an, a missing task or there's a task that you think you need to do for a longer period of time, but it is um, listed here uh, for a month only. Also, this one needs to be approved by your advisor. Your advisor needs to see when she or he will check your progress reports. Where are you already in? Did you deviate uh, with the schedule from your Gantt chart? Or are you running fast? 
So this one needs to be approved by advisor and this one needs also to be approved by your instructor. If the instructor can see that you're going very slow or very fast or there are still a lot of steps that you need to accomplish within those major activities, your instructor also can pinpoint if there's a missing step. So the example a while ago is for social researches. This example here now is for experimental uh, research. So you will see here that their major activities are laboratory activities. You need a request and you can see here collection, uh, preparation of the extract, then development of the antibacterial test, safety test, physical chemical test, and the like. So it's... Um, quite similar, just that the activities are different. Let's just insert these frequently asked questions for per the preparation of your Gantt chart. Number one, can we extend the Gantt chart to weeks or days? This is yes. Um, in my case, I when the funding agency asks for the Gantt chart, I write it in months. But when I do it already for my own con uh, use, I write it in weeks so that I can uh, strictly uh, look at my schedule if I am still within the schedule. But for days, I don't really um, uh, uh, recommend writing it in days because we don't really hold uh, others' schedules, for example. So if you write it in days, um, there will be a lot of instances that you will have to uh, erase and then rewrite if these are in days. So I suggest you write it in weeks or in months. Next question, can we specify the group mate of pers or persons responsible in the chart? Yes. Uh, we actually did this already in the gun chart for our core shelter project wherein there are four of us, um, Ma'am Lily Malabo, uh, Sir Jack, myself, and Dean Julius. So uh, within the gun chart, uh, it's color-coded. If it is colored um, yellow, uh, the researcher responsible is for example mom lily if it is a uh, colored green uh, the person responsible is sir jack and so on you can also do that so since this is just a short uh, video uh, showing you the preparation before your data collection i've also inserted how do we write letters to agencies just to be uh uh, uniform for everyone in our college. Um, but first, why do we write letters? So a classmate of yours and a couple of you already had a query with regards to sampling frame. So ma'am, we do not know the population. For example, in our funded research, you saw that we needed the population of GIDA IPs in the province of Cagayan. Of course, we needed to know the right agency to ask for this. And we initially asked from the National Commission of Indigenous Peoples if they have this data. But they told us that they do not have, they do have, but it is incomplete and the agency with an updated data is DOH. Hence, we wrote a formal letter for us to get this data. And because we cannot just barge in at Department of Health and as a list just like that, we needed to write a formal letter to this agency. First, you need to use the letterhead of our college and our university and then know the head of the agency or the barangay to which you have a request and um, their you, the complete name and with their nominals, if they're PhD, CESO, um, and their position and the address of the agency. Of course, do not forget the date. Next is you need to introduce who you are. Okay, so you will see here, dear sir, we the third year Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy students, 
of the College of Allah Health Sciences, Andrews Campus, are to conduct the study entitled blah, 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 blah. So you need to introduce yourselves. Next is you need to state your request and what it is for. So that means you need also to state the title of your proposal. You can also state there the objectives of your proposal and then your request. If you're requesting um, permission to conduct or float questionnaires or if you have a list that you need from them, for example, your sampling frame. Just like in this letter written by Mom Lili and Malabo, when we ask for the list of the indigenous people per municipality of Cagayan, it's here. And then it is important for you to state that you will only use the documents for your research. And of course, the important part is you need to give your details. I've already uh, seen letters uh, passed by Ivy and Ralph today for uh, my signature, supposedly. And they all, at the end part of their letter, it's written there if they have questions or um, information regarding the uh, request, uh, you can contact this using this number and also email that contact person. And lastly, you should have only one representative from your group who will be signing the letter. Uh, noted by your advisor, that's very important. The advisor must check first your letter. Also by your research instructor and lastly, finally, your letter needs to be approved by our dean. You need to print uh, or have two copies of these um, letters. One will act as your receiving copy so that if you have follow-ups and you, you need attachments for your uh, final uh, manuscript, your hardbound copy, you have a copy of the letter which is received by the agency. So that's it for this video. Uh, we've learned about uh, how to write your GAN chart and the letters to agencies. For the next video, I'll be talking about uh, research instruments for those who will be doing survey questionnaires, its validity and reliability, and how to use softwares for these research instruments. Thanks for watching.